Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi and good afternoon to everyone. So today is, uh, is our lecture number six, uh, and uh, graph theory part four. Okay. So we're gonna learn about shortest path problems, planar graph, and graph coloring. Shortest path problems is a classic unique problems in anything that have to do with the you know route or routing. Either your GPS or your network route, or maybe some circuit uh, electronics movement for or in a for photonics, there are a lot of applications, shortest path problems, and then you get you got a planar graph and also a graph coloring. So before this, uh, when you have a graph, each edge you have you don't have a weightage. Okay, there is no weightage sign for that graph, meaning that. If uh, before this that we learn like let's say this is uh, vertex A and this is vertex B and this is vertex C, we just put an H between them. Okay, there is no weightage. So graph that have a number assigned to each H are called weighted graph. So like this one, this is unweighted graph. There is no weightage. Okay. So in this like weighted graph, of course, uh, this is based from uh, in, in in USA. So you use it miles. So like San Francisco to New York is two five three four miles, or in kilometers, I think times zero point six something like that. And so from San Francisco to uh, Ch Chicago is one eight five five miles, and so on. This is all the weightage. Okay, this is all the weightage. The good practice is to, if you want to draw a graph with a weight weightage, try to draw it on a scale. But of course, I mean a scale uh, like uh, the heavier the weightage, the longer the edge will be. Okay, that's a good that's a good practice. So like this one, one nine one Boston to New York is only one hundred ninety one miles. So they have a very short edge there. Uh, draw it, but from San Francisco to New York, you have two, four, three, four miles, which is the edge are very long. So a good practice for you to, if you want to draw an edge with a uh, edge that have weightage, uh, please make it a scale on that. And it can also be a fares. So fares like directly proportional to the distance. Like San Francisco and New York is hundred twenty nine dollars USD. San Francisco to Chicago $99. So it can be also it can be a distance and it also can be a fare, a price of the flight tickets or something like that. Okay? And it can also be a flight times. Like San Francisco to New York it take about 4 hours and 5 minutes. Chicago to Boston 2 hours and 10 minutes. New York to Boston is like 50 minutes and so on. So weightage can be anything. Then you can put a number in. So the weighted graph, a weighted graph is a graph in which each H U V from U to V has a weight U W U V. Each weight is a real number. Okay, is a real number. Let's say this is two km. So this is a weightage. You put a two weight uh, two km. Weight can represent distance, cost, time, capacity, and all others you can think of. The length of path in weight graph is the sum of the weight on the H. So U to V and V to W is a 3 km. So overall distance U W is 5 km, sort of. So the length of the weight graph is the sum of the weight on the H, 2 plus 3. And Jigstra algorithm find the shortest path between two vertices. Jigstra. This is a Dutch, uh, I think he's a Dutch, he's a very famous uh, mathematician or physicist, you can call it. Uh, we even have one Jigstra lab here, I think in MM6 if I'm not mistaken. He's very famous. Jigstra is the base of all these uh, shortest paths. Everything from, you know, Google Maps ways use Jigstra algorithm as their base. Okay, shortest path problem. Given a weighted graph and two vertices U and V, we want to find a path of minimum total weight between U and V. Let's say Honolulu is U and what's a PVD? Uh, 
can't remember what so P H and L to PV so this is U and this is V Length of pi is the sum of the weight of it. It's the shortest part between Providence, Providence and Honolulu. See, this is Providence is Honolulu. So you put U, U Honolulu, Providence. Oh, so this application you can apply in internet packet routing, flight reservation, or driving directions. So this, if you from Honolulu to Providence or vice versa, you can say this is the shortest path. There's a lot of route. Okay, shortest path only consider uh, in 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 a routing theory, in a routing theory or mobility theory, uh, the short the the most simplest way is based on the number of hooks or distance. But let's say if you in more advanced routing theory, if the, there is a congested link, let's say uh, let's say or if, even though uh, Oregon to Providence is 849 miles but let's say this traffic jam here the traffic jam some of the like routing theory they will choose a uh, fastest time not a uh, shortest distance fastest time or shortest distance or any other link metrics link quality if you talk about network link quality bandwidth and so on so this is some of the some of the consideration you have to take when you want to take off from source to the destination. But of course, the shortest distance, shortest pass problem is the base of all this, and it is the best because it have mm -hmm. a less routing overhead, or we call it overhead. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Any question? I heard some. Want to ask anything? Feel free to interrupt me if you if you have any questions. Is there snow? Is there snoring? Someone snoring? Never mind. <laughs> That's okay. Pro property one, a sub path of shortest passes is itself a shortest pass. A sub path of a shortest path is have a short, 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 shortest path. So this is self explanatory. Property 2, there is a tree of shortest path from a start vertex to all other vertices. So you can make a tree from all this. Example, tree of shortest path from Providence. So Providence to MIA, straight away. Providence to LGA, you can take one, uh, you can take a PVD, LGA, and DFW. This is the tree of short, short path. Providence to DFW, Providence to uh, SFO, San Francisco, Providence to Lex, Los Angeles, you can put here. So this is a tree that you can create off. A Jigstra algorithm. The distance of a vertex V uh, from A, S is the length of shortest path between S and V. Distance of vertex V from vertex S. So this one S. So you have a couple others. So this is the V source and destination. Maybe you have other vertex, but this is the shortest path. Shortest path from between S and V. Distance S V. Jigsaw algorithm computes the distance of all the vertices from given start vertex S. So assumption is the graph is connected. The edges are undirected. So this is all assumption. It can also be a directed where we, uh, in this uh, in this course, we will not cover the directed, you know, uh, jigsaw algorithm. The graph is connected. The edges are undirected, and the edge weights are non-negative. Okay, non-negative, a real number. All right. So you cannot have. Uh, yeah, they also a, a negative uh, edges, a ne negative weightage, but we will not cover that. So these are the three important assumptions, you know, uh, for the Jigstra shortest path algorithm. We grow a cloud of vertices beginning with S, and eventually covering all the vertices. So, let's say this, this, all these vertex that pos pos possible a route to from source to destination V. Sometimes you see there are a lot of like this is have one more compared to other for these two routes. But maybe this is the shortest distance if you just uh, consider only a uh, distance from S to V. So you grow a cloud. You calculate there's a technique which I'll show you later. So you grow a cloud of vertices. 
And then we store with each vertex V a label DV representing the distance of V from S in the subgraph consisting of clock and JSON vertices. So uh, I will show you in an example later. And at each step, we add to the clock where the vertex U outside the clock with the smallest distance label DU. So we just uh, show it uh, in the next slide. We update the labels of the vertices adjacent to U. So look at this example. DSU. Let's say this is a V. Okay. Consider an H E U Z such that U is the vertex most recently add to the cloud. Z is not in the cloud. Okay. Okay. Before this, before okay, just uh, just uh, first just uh, remove this uh, edges DU. When you first discover you have S to V. S to V, sorry, uh, wait, sorry, sorry. So this is not a V, uh, sorry, this is E, so say this is F. So when you first discovered, okay, just ignore E first, H, E. Let's say when you first discover, uh, this one is also U. So S, U, either you want to select U, uh, H, E or H, F. Before you discover E, you discover F first. So you put S, U is also 50. This one is also 50. This is 50 as well. So U, F, 50 plus 25. You put 75 here first. This is first. This is your first uh, discovery. Okay. You grow cloud here. And then you discover... Sorry, uh, and then you discover this one, the U50, and you discover, you discover like an HE. When you try to calculate 50, 6, 50 plus 10 is 60, and 60 is uh, less than 75, you remove 75 and you put 60. So, the actual shortest path uh, uh, route is SU with the HE, you go to H E. So distance Z is a minimum distance Z DU plus weighted E. So this is a formula. So first you discover H F and then you got 75. And then when you discover H U is a much more like a shorter route, much more nearer. So you have a 10 compared to F and when you add 50 plus 10 is 60. 60 is less than 75, so you remove 75, you put 60. So this is the shortest path. This is what we call the relaxation of HE. Okay, you update, you update, you relax. Relaxation. Just, uh, just understand the relax, relaxation when you discover a new, better, shorter route. This is what the relaxation in. This is what we call the H relaxation in Jigstra algorithm. So let's take this as as example. Uh, you put here A, you put here B, you put here C and D and E and F. I actually should should make a new example. This is some some example that I just screenshot from internet. But never mind. I will show you either any any example. Any example, the techniques are still the same. Doesn't matter. So you have here uh, 8. This 8. This is 4. This is 1. And this is 7. This is 2. This is 3. This is 2. This is what? Uh, this is 9. And this is 5. Okay, we try to do uh... okay first you take from a okay you take from a start with zero what is the adjacent vertex of a let's say you want to okay adjacent vertex of a is b c and d so a to b is you grow a cloud here first uh, you grow a cloud here a to b is eight so you put here eight eight a Meaning that it coming uh, the route the the des the source of this coming from A. So 
A to C is 2. So you put here 2A. Meaning that is coming from A. And A to D is 4. So it's 4A. So this is the cloud that you build at first. Okay, between that, between uh, others are infinity. Others ages that are not reach, uh, others ages that are not reachable by A, not uh, an adjacent vertex, you put infinity. Okay, now from A, 2 and 4D, which one has the smallest number, smallest distance? Anyone? C, Dr. C, okay. C good. All right. yeah, good, good. C, the shortest one. Yeah, the shortest one. So you select C. So you select C first. So this route is clear. This route, wait. Uh, this route is clear already. So you put 2A. Okay, now from C, 2A, uh, you calculate, okay, A and C already settled. A and C already settled, so you don't you ignore this. So from C, what is the adjacent vertex of C? B, D, F, and E. So from C, C to B is 2 plus 7. 2 plus 7 is 9. 9 is bigger or lower than 8? Definitely bigger. So bigger, you, bigger. bigger. So bigger you ignore because 8 is much more smaller. Remember, you want to shortest path. Okay, uh, C to D, 2 plus 1 is 3. 3 is bigger or smaller? Smaller. Smaller, so you remove 4D, you put 3. C, coming from C. Okay, so now C 9, because 9 is infinity, 2 plus 9 is 11. C and 2 plus 3 is 5, uh, what? 5, uh, 5 C, sorry. 5C. So now you already grow a cloud here. Sorry for the very messy 11. So you remove infinity. So this is 5. So infinity 5, so you have 5C. So you settle, uh, okay, C to A. Uh, settle 0, okay, B2. 2 already done. And then from 3, 8, 5 and 11. From, uh, so you have 8, uh, you have 8, 3, 5 and 11. Which one has the smallest number? Three, doctor. Three, doctor. Okay, so this one, this one, route settled. So you started from here. Okay. Three. Uh, what is the adjacent? Uh, what is the adjacent of D? C already done. A already done. So you have F. You have only F. So three plus five is three plus five is eight. Eight is smaller or bigger than eleven? It's smaller, so you you uh, you put eight D. Oh, so messy. Never mind. Eight uh, D, something like that. Uh, and then eight D. So only D D only have F. So you grow. So you done this part. So you have eight five and eight. You have eight five and eight. So of course you will select five because this is smaller and you do all the process the same whole process again okay like e uh like five e to f e e to b is five plus two is seven seven is lower or bigger than eight so i said two five plus two seven so it's lower so you remove eight and you seven e and uh, what else? This one. So only have E. So this one you settle pretty much. 8 and 8, B. Uh, B plus 7, like uh, 8 plus 7, 15 definitely. And 8 plus 2. So yeah, pretty much you settle everything here. Okay. 8 and 8. 
so this is the cloud that you first you have uh, okay from here this is the first cloud this is the second cloud remember C C that has a short, shortest pass it's better for you to put like 2A or something so that you know you can trace back where it's come from and then this is the third cloud 3 this is the fourth cloud E yeah something yeah E and then uh, and then you B and then F so this is the cloud that you the shortest pass that you calculate so this is one way to the, the, this is one way to how to implement a shortest uh, path using Jigstra algorithm. So Jigstra algorithm is based on the greedy method. It adds vertices by increasing distance. So yeah, this is all the greedy met methods. You find, uh, you increase the distance one by one. You check which one is the smallest one. So at, if you find another, if you find a better route, you see if you like like. Uh, before this a to b is 8 but when you add uh, 2 plus uh, 2 plus this one 5 if, not, if I'm not mistaken is it 5 7 2 plus 7 9 uh, so one, uh, which one uh, okay let's say this uh, like this h2 before this previous is 4 but when you do a 2 plus 1 a 3 this is H relaxation you find a better route rather than A to D you go A C to D so A C D is 3 rather than straight away A to D 4 so this is H relaxation it is based I mean you increase a distance little uh, distance bit by bit and then you uh, try to find the shortest path which one has the shortest uh, smallest value or not Sorry, you you try to find the smallest value. So using a Jigstra algorithm with the assumption that we have before uh, is an undirected positive number. Uh, so you cannot go wrong with the shortest pass algorithm. You cannot go wrong. Okay. So this is a Jigstra algorithm pseudo code. You can. So uh, this is all based on the technique that we used before. This, uh, this, that, that is the first way. There are the second way. Let's say you want to find the shortest path from A to Z. Okay, shortest path from A to Z. So first you do a table, a set of. Uh, first you do a set of table. So on the column, you put all the vertex from A to from A to Z. Okay, from A to Z, vertex A to Z. So this one, you start from A. So if you start from A here, you put A here, 0. A to A, 0. Never mind. A to B was the adjacent vertex. A to B is 4. 4a so you put here 4a a to c is 3 3a a to c is 3a so d e f g and z uh, a cannot uh, you know uh, it's not uh, adjacent vertex of a so you put here all infinity <laughs> all right never mind so from 4 and 3, which one is smaller? So this one A, you done already. From, from I, so you have 4 and 3, which one is smaller? Of course, three. Three, one. Okay, 3. So you put here 3A, so you put here vertex C. Yeah? It, in this uh, rows, it doesn't have to follow the alphabetical or what, whatsoever. So you put here C. So here C, starting from C, so this route you already settled. You don't have to go back to this route. This route already settled. So from C is 3A. And then C adjacent to B is 3 plus 4, 7. Correct. 3 plus 4, 7. 7 is bigger than bigger. 4. 
so you ignore that so you on this b you still still put 4a c is adjacent to d 3 plus 3 is 6 so 6 of course 6 is smaller than infinity you put here 6 c so you put here 6 c and then c also adjacent to e 3 plus 5 is 8 8 c so you put here 8 c so c cannot reach f g and z so this one is still an, an infinity okay now between 4 3 okay 3 already done here so between 4 6 8 of course uh, the smallest number is b 4 a So we settle here for A. This route is settled. Be between A to B for A. So from B, B Y is the adjacent vertex of B is D and C. B D is uh, four plus five is nine. Nine is bigger than six, so you ignore that. So you put here six C. Uh, B to C is 4 plus 4, 8, 8 is, uh, 8 is bigger than 3, so you ignore that, so you, uh, sorry, this one already, uh, B and C already settled, uh, sorry, B to C already settled, you don't have, you ignore that, B to D, and uh, that, that's it, you cannot reach E, this one is still 8C, and this one is, when you see here B doesn't have a adjacent to E, you just put the previous value, 8C. So between 6 and 6C and 8C, sorry, 8C, 6C, this one is uh, C3 plus 6 Between 6 and 8 is 6D. So you put here uh, D. And then here you put uh, 6C. This is done. So D, this rock is done. This other rock is also done. So you have here 3, 6C. 6D uh, six, uh, is adjacent to F. 6 plus 5 is 11. 11d 6 plus 5 is 11d so you put here 11d uh, and then d uh, d is only f d e is 6 plus 1 7 7 is lower than 8 so you remove 8 so you put 6 7d uh, where is that uh, d e so you This is 11 column, column, sorry. So this is 11, sorry, uh, 11D, 11D. And this one, 6 plus 1, 7. 7 is bigger than, uh, lower than 8. So you put 7A, you replace this one with 7D. 11D and uh, D cannot reach uh, Z or G. Still infinity. So between 7 and 11 here, 7 and 11, so of course 7, 7D, okay, so you put here, this one is E, this one is E, so E have a connection to G, 7 plus 5 is 12, 12, 12E, and E also have connection to, uh, yeah, Sorry, done. 6C. This one is already done. This one is done as well. So 12E. Uh, e only FG. D done. So E only FG. So this one is 11D. This one is still infinity. Between 11 and 12, of course, F has the smallest number. This one is F. And uh, F is 11D. So 11D here, 
So from F, what is it? Jason, 11 plus 7 is 18. 18. So 18 is definitely lower than infinity. So 18. 18 F. F to G is 11 plus 2. Sorry, uh, G is actually 12 E here. So 11 plus 2 is 13. 13 is bigger than 12. So you ignore that. You still put 12 E. Okay. Now you have a 12 and 18. Of course, you the lower now the lowest number is 12. So you put here G. And then G you have here. We call that uh, G you have here 12 E. And G the adjacent is Z. 12 plus 4 is 16. Okay, before this is 18 F. So 12 plus 4 is 16. So 16 is lower than 18. So you put 16 G. So here you put 16 G. Okay. This already soft. This already soft. And this already soft. So here you only have Z. Z is only 16 G. So let's say if you want to trace back here. If you want, if you want to trace from A to Z. So you start from column Z here. Z. So if you want to trace back, trace, you have 16G here, 16G, so you go to the G, uh, row G and column G, you have 12E, have 12E, so you go to row E and also row E, so you have 7D. So you have here 7D. So you go to the D here, D, row D and column D, you have 6C. Okay. C is here, C. Row C, column C is 3A. 3A and AA is 0, 0, 0, 0A, you can put that. So if you want to trace back, is uh, A. C, D, E, G, and of course Z. So A, C, D, E, G, Z. And the path is the path length is sixteen. A, C, D, E, G, Z. So A, C. D, E, G, and Z. This is the shortest path. Okay. A, C, A, C, D, E, G, and Z. When you, when, when, when you do a trace, A, C, D, E, G, Z. And the path length is 16. So, any question on this, Jigstra? Okay, assume no no questions. Uh, don't worry. Uh, this uh, lecture is recorded, and the beauty of it, you can also. Just now we have a moment of some of the students snoring, so you also can hear that. Never mind. So, uh, uh, what is the Jigsaw theorems? Uh, Jigsaw algorithm finds the length of the shortest path. Length of the short between two vertices in a connected simple undirected so please uh, please note this uh, please note this uh, keywords in a connected simple undirected weighted graph so you have is a connected graph is a simple graph is undirected and it's a weighted graph okay this is going to find the length of the shortest path between two vertices are connected, simple and the weighted graph. So this is the assumption. It's a connected. It is connected. Connected graph. It is a simple graph. It's an undirected graph. It is a undirected graph. And it's also a weighted graph. Four keywords. Dijkstra algorithms. So the traveling salesman problem is one of the classical problems in computer science. 
so last time when you do a marketing now of course you can do a just social media and stuff uh, but last time before all this internet uh, explosion you use a traveling salesman problem so traveling salesman problem what is it the traveling salesman wants to visit a number of cities and then return to his starting point of course he wants to save time and so he wants to determine the shortest cycle for his trip we can represent the cities and distance between them by a weighted complete undirected graph okay this is how you presented uh, you want uh, this salesman want to visit the city but he only wants to visit the cities he wants to save time and energy so he wants to make the shortest cycle for his trip so we can realize the city and distance between them by weighted complete that he maybe only want to visit the city once once he visit he doesn't want to go back there or try to avoid the route that going back to that city the problem then is to find a shorter cycle of minimum total weight that visits each vertex exactly once when you see a vertex and exactly once you remember the Euler Euler graph okay Euler graph you only visit the vertex once okay, sorry Hamiltonian Hamiltonian sorry uh, Euler is more on H it's a Hamiltonian graph okay finding the shortest cycle is different than Jigsaw shortest path it's much harder to no polynomial time algorithm. So this is one of the open mathematical problem that still exists until today. So the traveling salesman problem is important. Variety of scheduling application can be solved as a traveling salesman problem. So scheduling application, or you schedule your packets, or you schedule your like uh, banking services and all others. Examples: ordering drill position on the drill press, school bus routing. These are some applications that you can use using a traveling salesman problem. The problem has theoretical importance because it is a class difficult problem known as non polynomial NP hard problems. So, NP hard problems is one of the, I think, millennium problems. Millennium problems that haven't been solved yet. There is, I, I can't remember, you can Google either six or seven mathematical problems that we call a millennial, millennial, millennium problem, something like that. If you can solve that, you will get a one million USD, sort of. Only on, on this seven, uh, on this uh, seven mathematical problems, only one has been solved by the Russian mathematic, mathematicians. Uh, never mind, we don't go into that details. So let's say this is a federal management. Uh, this is using a uh, uh, use, using the traveling salesman problem, a federal emergency management agency, FEMA. So visit must be back to four local offices of FEMA, going out from the returning to the same main office in Northridge, Southern California. So this is an, so this is a home. This is a home. You want to go to uh, all these four branches office. You want to find a shorter cycle. In order of all possible cycles. The result is M minus 1 cycles to enumerate for a graph with M nodes. Only small problem can be solved with this approach. So this is a possible cycle like uh, home 01, 02, 04, 03 and H. Home 0, 1, 0, 3. So this is the minimum if you like possible cycles if you plot one by one. Okay. So you have home 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3. Uh, home, like home 0, 1, 0, 3, 0, 2, 4 and so on. So this lot of what is the shorter cycle that you can think of. So for this problem, we have 5 minus 1 factorial, since you have 5 uh, vertex, 12 cycles. Symmetrical problem needs to enumerate m minus 1 factorial over 2 cycles, okay? So the optimal solution is here. Again, 
so from home you go to 0, 3, 4, 2, 1. This is one of the circuits. You can call this a Hamiltonian circuit as well. Hamiltonian circuits. You go to all the vertex. You go through all the vertex only once and you come back to your starting points. Hamil Hamiltonian. Euler, you just concentrate on H. So unfortunately, as I mentioned before, no algorithm solving traveling salesman problem with polymer worst case time complexity has been devised yet. It is an open problem, NP, NP problem, NP hard problems, one of the millennium problems. This means that for large numbers of vertices, solving the traveling salesman problem is impractical. This might, if you see that famous example, only five uh, vertices may be easy. How about like 1000 vertices or like protein cells or whatever like millions or something so it become complex so in this case we can use efficient approximation algorithms that determine a path with length may be slightly larger than a traveling salesman path but again this is a approximation only okay approximation it's not accurate so this and np hard problems open open problems if you want to solve it okay now we go to the second part it's a planar graph a graph or multigraph G is called planar if G can be drawn in the plane with its edges intersecting only vertices G such as drawing of G is called an embedding of G in the plane so okay uh, yeah if you read mathematics, not doing mathematics, if you read mathematics, you're going, you're going to get confused and that stuff. So what we have, we, we straight away go to example, you have K4 graph. Let's say you, remo you just move this edge here. Let's say this is the edge uh, U. So you remove U here. So you can get that uh, graph that the edge is not intersect with each other, like uh, overlapping or intersect. So you can see all these edges are not intersecting with all other edges. Okay, if you move this to this, you plan a graph. So VLSI design overlapping edges requires extra layers. Circuit design can overlap wires on board. Of course, circuit design you can overlap wires on board. If not, it will become short. The, the, it, it, it will blow the circuit. So this is a planar graph. You try to make uh, you try to make an edge not intersecting or not overlapping with each other. That is basically a planar graph, which you can summarize on this word. So this again, uh, like this is a cube or Q Q Q three. So you, if you want to represent a graph, uh, you can represent like like this. Still have four edges. Sorry, still have eight vertex. And one, two, three, one, two, three, four, four, eight, twelve. They have twelve edges. Okay. Q three. From this graph, you can represent this is a planar graph as well. Okay, planar graph. K33 is non-planar. K33 is non-planar because B1, V5, V3, uh, this is because if you try to include all this, uh, let's say V1, V5, let's say you put V6 here. You put V6 here. V6 is connected to V3. You say put here V3. V6 is connected to V3. V3 connected to V4. V6, V5. V3, V4, V5. V6 connected to V2. V6 is connected to V2. V6 also connected to V1. So you cannot like 
you have to overlap or intersect with each other I mean uh, of course you can put v6 here but it will uh, it will intersect if you want to connect to v2 so there's no way k33 is planar so k33 is non non planar so this one v3 v1 v2 v3 v4 v5 you have let's say you have v6 here v6 outside v6 is connected to v3 okay, if you connect it to v3 you will overlap let's say you put v6 inside here v6 v6 is connected to v3 yes and v6 is also connected to v2 v2 you will overlap here and v6 also connected to v1 v1 if you put you if you want to connect v6 to v2 it will overlap here so k33 is non planar so yeah you 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 try uh, try and errors try not to make any edge intersect or overlap with each other there's a planar graph so there's also a theorem euler's planar graph theorem for connected planar graph uh, planar graph or multi graph you have vertex minus number of edges plus a number of regions okay number of regions if we uh, if we erase all this so this is number of regions region 2 and region 1 So you have here if this is a region two, this this graph has two region. This graph has three region. Region one, region two, and region three. So this graph has three region. So planar graph, how do you one way if you want to determine whether it's planar graph or not, you use this Euler's planar graph theorem. V minus E V, uh, v equal to uh uh, sorry v minus e plus r is equal to 2 okay v minus e plus r is equal to 2 so the, you must satisfy this theorem so examples of Euler's theorem here v minus e plus r equal to 2 okay so how many vertex we have here for 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 vertex minus E edges, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, 5 minus 6 plus region, region 1, region 2, region 3, and region 4. So you have 4 region. Is equal to 4 minus 6 is? Minus 2, minus 2 plus 4 is 2. So it satisfies the Euler's theorem. So this graph is a planar graph. Okay? Planar graph. A proof of Euler's formula by induction. So this is a base case. Base case you have only two vertex, vertex U and vertex V, and one H and one uh, region because like this one is only have one region. So V is equal to two, E equal to one, R region is equal to one. So V uh, minus E plus R equal to two. You have V two minus one plus one is two. So this graph is a planar graph. So from base case for n plus one cases. So let's say you have R n E n minus V n plus two is true. Let A n n one B n one be the H that is added to G n. So be the H that is added to the G n to obtain G n plus one. Okay. We prove that R n equal to en minus vn plus 2 is true can, can be proved using two cases let's say you add 
H that is added to Gn and Gn plus uh, from Gn to Gn plus one. So you want to prove of a uh, Euler's theorem, Euler's uh, we call that Euler's planar graph theorem. Okay, you want to prove that. There are two ways to prove it, uh, using the best case uh, and using n plus one case case. So case one, you let, let let's say uh, you ignore this. Let's say you ignore this h. So you have only one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one. Sorry, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven vertex. So previously only have. Uh, Seven vertex. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Okay. Assume that uh, is let a n plus one b n plus one be the h that is added to g n. So when you put r n uh, with r n minus one is Let's say you put any H, you want to connect this one H. This is the H. Okay. Before this, you only have a V equal to 7. R equal to 2, region 1 and region 2. And uh, E equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 4, 5, 6, 7. So if you use the formula V minus R plus, sorry, V minus, uh, V minus E plus R, so V minus E plus, V minus E plus R, V is, uh, V is 7 minus E is 7 plus R2, so you got 2, so it's satisfied. Let's say Rn plus 1, you put 1 H here. So you have Rn, Rn plus 1, in that region, from this one only R1 and R2. So now you have R1, R2 and R3 region. En plus 1, H, N plus 1. So H before this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Now because you have another H here, so you have 8. You have uh, eight H, so this one uh, region equal to three H equal to eight, and then how many vertex? Vertex three remains the same. Vertex is remain the same. Yes. Anyone? No, no I I miss. Huh? What 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 was there again? I miss touch my button. Okay, okay, all right, all right, no mind. Okay, uh, so if you add one H here, Rn, so V, the number of vertex is still the same, seven vertex. So if you try to prove this, uh, V minus E plus R, so V is uh, seven minus E eight plus R three. Seven minus eight minus one plus three equal to two, so this is one way to prove case one you add an h another way to prove is you add one vertex okay you add one vertex first you add an h here and second one you plus you add vertex okay after this we will go to break i just want to explain this one so you have here r n Region okay, different from this. You add you add one H here. Region you add another region because before this region one and region two. But you, when you add H, you have region one, region two, and region three. So this one when you add an vertex, you add in vertex here. Can be either here or here. The region will still be the same because this is the same region. Okay, this is the same region. So this is a region 1 and this is a region 2. So R is still equal to 2. So Rn plus 1 is equal to Rn, same. H, because previously you have 7H, now you add 1H, so 
h equal to a <coughs> so vertex vertex is you add one another one vertex so vertex 7 plus 1 is 8 so when you try to do uh, is this one um, v minus e um, so v is uh, 8 minus e 8 plus r 2 is equal to 2 so it proof so this is the two ways to prove the Euler's planar theorem v minus e plus r equal to 2 Euler's planar graph theorem okay there also a corollary which is a uh, smaller things than a theorem but we will go to break let's say 10 minutes uh, see you again on 210 all right okay all right all right, all right sure So, uh, there's a theorem for planar graph and there's a corollary corollary, the smaller things than a theorem. <clears throat> so, corollary, corollary one, let G graph or set of vertex, ver, ver, vertex V and H E be a connected simple planar graph. So, this is a keyword connected simple planar graph with E edges and V vertices. Connected, uh, connected, and simple planar graph. We see agent where v is more than t. So, for this corollary to work, the vertex at least must be three. Then h is less than three v minus six. So this is a corollary one. If the vertex v vertex is more than three, so e is equal or less than three v minus six. So a proof is a connected simple planar graph drawn in the plane divides the plane into regions says R of them. So let's say let's say uh, let, let have a look on this example. So this is region one and this is region two. The degree of H region is at least three. So degree uh, the degree region is like <coughs> uh, degree of each region is uh, this one is one. We will uh, talk about the. This is not. Okay, this uh, region one and region two. So region one has one, two, and three degrees. Region two has one, two, and three degrees. So the degree of each is at least three. So if you look at this, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So region one have degree nine. Region 2 have degree 7. 7. Because the graph discussed here are simple graph, no multiple edges that could produce regions of degree 2 or loop that could produce region of degree 1 are permitted. In particular, note that degree of the unbounded region is at least 3 because there are at least 3 vertices in the graph. So if you look at 3, vert vert three vertices in the graph, you can have a degree 1, 2, and 3. Region 2, 1, 2, and 3. So degree of region in a planar embedding of the connected graph, the number of edges bordering region is called a degree of the region. Like counting bridges, if any, twice. Like these bridges, 1 and 2. Okay? This is what we call a bridge. So like this, a region degree, you have degree of R, 1, 2, 3, region 1. Region 2 also, you have 3 degrees. Sort of. So what is degree of R here? You have 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So the answer is 5. This is degree of region R, 5. So know that the sum of degrees of regions is exactly twice the number. Sum of degrees of the regions is exactly twice the number of edges in the graph. Some degrees of the region. If you look at this one, let's say this is the simplest corollary one example one, two, and three. So region one have 
1, 2, 3 and then region 2 have 1, 2 and 3 ages is equal how many ages you have three ages so the num no the sum of degrees of the regions is exactly twice the number of ages in the graph so number of degrees r1 is uh, 3 plus 3 uh, ages is equal to 3 so r1 and r2 degree r1 is 3 degree r2 is 3 okay 1 2 and 3 1 2 and 3 so ages 3 uh, ages number 3 so degree r1 plus degree r2 is equal to 3 plus 3 equal to 6 so the sum of the degrees of the ridges is exactly twice the number of ages in the graph because each age occurs on the boundary of a region exactly twice either in two different regions or twice in the same region so because each region has a degree greater than or equal to 3 it follows that if you like 2 times ages is equal to summation of all region degree is more than 3R since each region has a degree of at least 3 so if you put Euler's theorem you have a E equal to 3v minus 6 corollary 1 to prove that e is equal or less than 3v minus 6 so show that k5 is non planar using corollary 5 so what is a k5 1 2 uh, 3, 4 and 5 This is K5 K5 have vertices 5 vertices and 10 edges 1, 2, 3, 4 5, 6 7, 8 uh, Wait one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, this one nine, and which else? Doctor. Yes, yes. Three, four. Uh, yes. For the planner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the edges can intersect with each other. Yes, planograph cannot. Yeah, planograph, you, the edges cannot intersect with each other. So, yeah, if you have here, just recall that. This graph, you can move, you can like move these uh, edges. So, it become like this. So, this is not a plan, this is the planograph. It's like K5F10. <laughs> I forgot everyone. Sorry, sorry. Okay, yeah, yeah. That's okay, that's okay. So, planar graph, simplest way, the simplest way to understand, of course, there's a wording for that. The ages cannot intercept with each other. In a simple, undirected, not a multi graph, not pseudo graph. Simple, undirected graph. Okay? So, group K5 have 5 vertices and 10 ages. One, two, three, four, five. Um, is that a correct? K5 is 10, 10, 10 ages. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. I try to count that one. Two, three, four, five. Uh, this one six. This one uh, seven. This one eight. This one nine. Ah, oh, yeah. Okay, great. So K five has five vert vertices. One, two, three, four, five, and ten edges. So before you try to mess up moving edges this and that, 
try to use a uh, theorem Euler's theorem or corollary one first so however okay uh, what is the corollary one is e 3v minus 6 so why Euler's theorem is a v plus e uh, sorry v minus e plus r is equal to 2 so how many vertices you have here 5 minus ages 10 plus region or oh, so many region uh, how many region here 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 uh, 8 9 10 11 is that is that is that correct okay. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Correct, doctor. Correct, eleven. Correct, okay. So plus eleven. So five minus ten is minus five plus eleven is positive six. So it doesn't follow the Euler's Euler's theorems. E is equal to how many edges you have here? Ten edges equal to three times vertex five three fifty minus 6 3 minus 3 3 times 5 is 15 minus 6 is 9 so this is an incorrect as well so this is how you prove using the mathematical formula the graph is not planar before you try to move this and that and become very messy understand the try to use a uh, Euler theorem and corollary sorry corollary one okay the inquiry e is not as in e 10 tv minus 9 so 10 is less than 9 this statement is incorrect therefore k5 is not planar and then corollary two let a set of graph uh, let a graph with a set of vertices and edges be a connected simple okay again Keyword connected, simple. Planar graph, then G has a vertex degree that does not exceed 5. G has a vertex degree that does not exceed 5. If G has 1 or 2 vertices, the result is true. Okay. If G has 3 or more vertices, then by query 1. So if it has more than 3, it's okay. Uh, if more than 3, you have to follow the corollary 1. So if the degree of every vertex were at least 6, so you use a hand shaking theorem remember ages is equal to summation of degree v but this uh, there might be at least one vertex with degree no greater than five so uh, if you use a corollary two a simple that g has vertex it that does not exceed five at least one vertex with no degree greater than five okay and also you have a corollary tree a set of graph uh, with uh, graph with set of vertex v and edges e be connected simple planar graph with v vertices uh, v must more than three vertex or equal e edges and no circuits of length three then e is less than two v minus four so show k three three is non planar using corollary three so K33 So this is K33 Because K33 has no circuit of length 3 This is easy to see because it is bipartite So it is a circuit Corollary 3 can be used K Corollary 3 K3 has 6 vertices and 9 edges. 6 vertices. 1, 2, 3. 6 vertices only. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 edges. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Because E is equal to 9 and 2V minus 4 is equal to 8. E less than 2V minus 4. So E9, e 2V8. So this does this is incorrect statement. So it cannot follow the corollary three. So K T three is a non planar. <coughs> okay. 
you don't have a corollary to example but yeah, never mind uh, so uh, plot graph okay. so you have corollary 1 corollary 1 you have a Euler's theorem first V minus E plus R and then you have a corollary 1 you have a corollary Corollary 1, 2 and 3 must uh, started if the vertex is equal or more than 3. Okay? Number of vertex are equal or more than 3. So you have corollary 2. And then you have a corollary 3. And then elementary subdivision. Operating operation which a graph are obtained by removing an edge UV and adding the vertex W and edges UW. So this is a planar subplanar graph, you can say that. And another term for this is homeomorphic graph. Homeomorphic same. <coughs> same species. No. Uh, it's the same uh, same type of graph. A subgraph that can generate the same graph. So graph G1 and G2 are termed as the homeomorphic. G1 and G2 if they are obtained by sequence of elementary subdivisions so G1 and G2 is a homeomorphic so let's see homeomorphic graph the loop free under the graph G1 and G2 are called homeomorphic if they are isomorphic or they can both be obtained from the same loop free under the graph H by sequence of elementary subdivision so this is that uh, this is that graph G1 this is subdivision number one. You add between uh, two vertex, you add these three edges, you add one vertex. And this is subdivision number three. Each of this one, uh, each of the the outer outer ring, you put one, ver one vertex each. So all this G1, G2 and G3 is homeomorphic. Homeomorphic graph, the same type of graph. So show that the graph G1, G2, and G3 are all homeomorphic. So just by adding this one vertex, so you can see that this basically G1, G2, and G3 is a homeomorphic. Okay, same type of graph, but just adds number of a. You just add a vertex between the you know you add additional vertex between any two vertex. So this you can get a homeomorphic graph, a subgraph, something like that. Another way to determine whether this is the non-planar is by using Kuratowski theorem. Kuratowski theorem. A graph is non-planar if and only if it contains a subgraph homeomorphic to KT3 and K5. If you can find any graph that is homeomorphic to K3, 3 or K5, meaning that the graph is non-planar. Okay. The intuition is homeomorphism is like graph isomorphism after ignoring some some of degrees some of degree two nodes. Example after ignoring nodes D E and F, which is D E and F. D E and F. In graph H, H is highest homeomorphic to K5. So you can see that if you if you uh ignoring some degree two nodes so j have two degrees one two you ignore this d has two degrees you ignore this e f h k ignore all this you will get this one so this is the homeomorphic to k5 this is a k5 you can see that it is a homeomorphic to k5 okay Sorry, uh, this one uh, K5 homomorphic to here. By removing all the vertex, you can get an exactly same or homeomorphic graph to the K5. Okay, this is the final part of the today's lecture. Graph coloring. So, when a map is colored, two regions with a common border are customarily assigned different colors. So, you can see like the map, any maps in the world, even Malaysia, 
two regions like you cannot same you cannot uh, two regions adjacent to each other like pera or kedah you cannot color both pera and kedah, kedah with the same colors in the map we want to use the smallest number of colors of just assigning every region its own color so it can be shown that any two dimensional map can be painted using four colors in such a way that adjacent regions meaning those with sharing common bond boundary salmon not just a point are different colors so you can see this is a map coloring of 51 all 51 51 or 52 states of the united states okay they have four colors a blue red green and what is this a yellow a yellowish uh, one two three uh, blue red green and kind of a yellow brown colors so each map in a plane can be represented by a graph each region is represented by a vertex so each region is by a vertex edges connected to vertices if the region is represented by this vertex have a common border two regions that touch at only one point are not considered adjacent the resulting graph is called the dual graph of the map dual graph so you can uh, represent this map so b b have uh, uh, b have border region with a c d so b a c d f g e all you can consider a vertex and b is connected to a adjacent one is a c and d a connect adjacent to b c d and e uh, and so on so you can see that this is the graph dual graph or graph representation of a map so you have here like d is connected to all other vertex or all the region so d is connected to all other vertex so this is the dual graph example another one is you can have this uh, okay a d c b and e so you have b is uh, adjacent to a c and e b uh, b a c and e a c and e is correct a is region is adjacent to b c and d and so on this is how you generate a dual graph a graph coloring a coloring of a simple graph is the assignment of a color to each vertex of the graph so that no two adjacent vertices are assigned the same color okay color of simple graph the assignment of a two to color to each vertex okay to color each vertex so you can see that each vertex of the graph so that no two adjacent vertices are assigned the same color so you're thinking about the vertex adjacent vertex cannot have the same colors the chromatic number of a graph is the least number of colors needed to for coloring of a graph. The chromatic number. What is the chromatic number of bipartite graph? So by by bipartite you you can divide by two. Okay, remember the bi bipartite and no two vertices have connection to each other. So how many colors for bipartite graph? Not there cannot be two adjacent graph with uh, two adjacent vertex with same colors so if bipartite graph how many colors minimum anyone how many colors you have region a you have region b Of course, if uh, you have only have you only need two two colors, as in this one is red, this one is blue. So there are no two two adjacent vertex, two adjacent vertex that have the same colors. So if you can see, like a Google Chrome itself is a chromatic number. Chromatic number of uh, Google Chrome has four colors. Google Google Chrome. So the chromatic number of a planar graph is no greater than four. Google Google Chrome is four colors. Is that correct? Google uh, Chrome. Uh, yes.
Google Chrome, yes, four color. Yeah. It seems that this is a simple, but it was already posted a conjecture in 1850s. Take about 126 years old to prove that, okay? Just remember this chromatic. The four color theorem. Take about, yeah, 120 years to prove it. They use a mathematical simulations. They show that if the theorem is false, there must be a counterexample of one approximately 2,000 types. Uh, at the moment, this four color theorem graph is input because no one can uh, prove that it is false. Okay, just remember, just remember that uh, it takes most or more, more than hundred years to solve this four color theorem. Just because you don't want the same color like a point or a vertex. Each adjacent vertex you don't want to be a same color, and you want to use a minimum number of colors to do that. So, what's the chromatic number of the graph shown below? Of course, you have here three: green, purple, and uh, green, purple, and yellow. So, let's try three color first. Three color words. So, the chromatic number of this graph is three. What is the chromatic number for each of the following graph? So if you can see the white, yellow, white. So this one is 2. So chromatic number, this one is 3. If you white, yellow, white, yellow. If you put here white, it will be the same with this white. So you cannot. So you have to put green. So this chromatic number is 3. There is a time complexity problem for this chromatic number. The best algorithm known for finding a chromatic number of graphs have exponential worst case time complexity. Even the problem of finding an approximation to the chromatic number of graph is a difficult. So that's why it's difficult more than 100 years to prove that. This explains why scheduling final exam is so difficult. Okay, you have a lot of subjects in University of Malaya. Okay. And then you don't want like you don't want like a two student that take different subject have the same exam date, right? But now it's easier since it's up to the lecturers when you want to do when they want to do the I mean the final exams for this P P K P. So one of the examples how can the final exam you see be so that no student has to exams at the same time? So, for instance, suppose there are seven finals to be scheduled. Suppose that the course are number one to seven. Suppose that the following pairs of courses have common student one and two, one and three, one and four, one and seven, two and three, and so on, six and seven. So, you make a table or you make a graph. The graph representing the scheduling of final exams. So, uh, suppose that following pair one and two. So, one and two have common student. 1 and 3 also have common student 1 and 4 have common students 1 and 7 have common student 2 and 3 2 and 4 and so on so from again from this graph it cannot uh, the maximum color i mean the maximum color you can if you're talking about chromatic number is only 4 four colors to represent all that so we have a red blue green brown green red brown one two three four so we have four chromatic numbers okay the minimum number of chromatic num uh, cro cro chromatic the, the minimum of chromatic number for this scheduling of final exam is four so you can like classify like time period one one and six See, 1 and 6. 1 and 6 is not connected. Causes 1 and 6. Time period 2 is only 2. 2 since 2 like connected to all others. Okay, 2 connected to all others. Except for 6. And then time period 3 is 3 and 5. And time period 4 is uh, 4 and 7. Okay. So this is us getting a final exams. Doctor, why the one and seven connect? 
What, what, what was that again? Why are uh, vertices for 1 and 7 connected? This one, 1 and 7? Mana? Oh, okay, okay, sorry. 1 and 2, 1 and 3, 1 and 4, okay? Uh, 2 and 3, 2 and 4, and so on. So if you like color red, blue, green, brown, red, blue, green, brown, green, red, red, blue, green, brown. This one can green. So there is there is no like two vertices adjacent to each other have the same colors. Okay. So this is time period. So like time period one, maybe Wednesday you can put courses one and six. So time period two only two. Time period three like uh, Friday you can put three and five together. Okay. And four like four and seven something like that. That is one way scheduling your final exams. So yeah, that's it for today.